Here's just some of the components I've managed to remove, including floppy and IDE connectors, connectors for audio, button cell holders, the piezo speakers, and all kinds of these little useful uh, connectors because they'll fit right in a standard PC board that you build your projects on. What is the secret to getting these out in a sane and efficient manner? Paint stripper gun. I'll show you how it works. Okay, this is one of a number of old motherboards that I have. It's being, getting ready to be sent to recycle. But before I send it to recycle, I'd like to get some of these parts off, like the button battery holder, some of these connectors, and so forth. But it would be insane to try to sit here with solder wick or solder sucker and try to get these out. This is a double-sided board. Uh, it would be extremely difficult and time-consuming. What if you could get this whole connector out? or this power connector at one shot you probably be spending a couple hours and a few dollars worth of solder wick I'm going to show you the easy way to strip parts out of old motherboards since it's going to recycle anyway alright the first things I want to get get out here here are some of the uh, USB connectors the little piezo speaker and so forth this is how it's basically done. Now, it depends on the type of motherboard you have. If you have a motherboard that has relatively a lot of metal exposed, they're going to be far easier than some types of boards that have super small holes that use very little solder and so forth. One trick you want to do, let's get out this little connector on the end. I use this uh, fan and what I'll do is I'll just stick it on there. That gives it some weight so when I heat it up with the when I heat the board up with the heat gun it'll just pull it on out for me. So this is a very hot paint stripper gun. And there it goes. Now once you start, oh, this also fell out of it at the same time. In fact, you don't always need to do that if it has a fairly number, if it has some weight behind the components, they will mostly fall out. Let's see what happens with these two connectors and the piezo and the little speaker. Once you get the board heated up some, it becomes easier to heat it up otherwise.
And there it goes. There's that. And the speaker fell on the floor. All right, let's look at something else here. I want to get this power connector because I want to be able to use it. It's a 24 pin power connector. I want to be able to use it to um, use a PC power supply as a general purpose power supply. A little bit of a different trick here. You're, you're going to have to heat it up. Move your gun back and forth. What you will hear, you'll hear the board beginning to crackle and buckle. If you've got connections with lots of solder on them, I'll show you how to deal with that. Notice most of the solder came out. That also tells me where I still need to heat the connector to get it fully out of the board. And there they are. And I also got that one out at the same time. Mm, let's go ahead and see if we can't get these two out as well. They supply lots of uh, push pins for your projects. And there they are. You may have to clean up a little bit of solder splashes, but that's fairly easy. This one got very little solder splash on it. And so that's how you can remove lots of useful parts and components from old motherboards before they go to recycle. If you do this, do it in a well-ventilated area. I'm doing it in a building outside my in my yard. I don't do this in, in the upstairs living room because you will, it does stink a little bit. So good luck and get some parts.